Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. So for today's video, we're going to be working on uh, on a repair. And you guys might recognize this board. This was the original board that I made the um, the, C the original CC3 DIY CC3 video with. Uh, it's been you know it's been a great board. It's uh, given me no trouble up until just recently, after a couple of uh, pretty hard landings. Uh, when I plug it into the the ground control station, um, the magnetometer, or excuse me, not the magnetometer, the acceler accelerometer is reporting as unhealthy. Uh, I took a look at it under the scope and you know checked to see if uh, all of the the uh, the solder pads were all connected properly and even refloat a few of them, but um, you know that didn't have any effect. So short of having to hook this up to a serial debugger, uh, you know I figured it'd just be faster if I uh, swap out the accelerometer and see if that actually uh, does the trick. So for this. Um, so for this project, what we're going to be using, um, here are the tools. Just a little bit of no, no clean flux dispensing pen uh, for, a, for my iron. And this will just be used for touch-up. I've got a super, super fine tip on there. And that'll just be for uh, touching up any of the areas that get missed in the reflow. Um, I'm not going to be doing uh, solder, uh, solder paste. I'm going to take uh, a bigger tip and re retin the pads. And then, um, I mean, of course, obviously, this is after I remove the accelerometer. accelerometer. But uh, I'm going to put this under the heat gun, uh, dialing in the heat gun at about, let's see, this is the tip I'm using for the heat gun. Uh, I'm going to be dialing that tip in at about 300, and, well, about 300 degrees Celsius just to, get, uh, just to get it on and off real fast. And uh, one other thing that I probably will be doing, I haven't decided if I'm actually going to try to do this yet, but um, this is a little bit of polyamide tape. You probably heard this referred to as captain tape. It's uh, heat, heat, heat resistant, and what I'll do is I'll probably just put a little here on the um, on the, so, on the uh, servo pins just to keep the plastics from, from overheating too much. Everything else should be fine. But uh, you know these will this edge will probably melt a little bit, so I'll just put a little heat shield in there and see if I can pop that off. Now the plan here for this uh, to make this work, you can't just reflow. Uh, you, you, you can't just apply heat and then expect this to come off. It needs a little bit of help. And what I found is that even if you just apply a little bit of flux around the edges, uh, you know that'll be enough to introduce some additional heat to the to, to the pad. And, uh, and I'm, at this point, I'm not even sure if this is going to work, but uh, I figured I'd document it just in case it does. So, yeah, let's get started. Um, right, so just give me a sec while I switch over to a macro lens and uh, let's get a close-up of this as it's happening. right off. Yes. See how simple that was? So, okay, let's take a look at these traces. Um, we'll need to retin these pads here. Uh, these look okay. A couple here will have to be redone. But all in all, it looks pretty good. So... Reflux these pads. All right, that should do it. See how easy that is? at an awkward angle here. Hang on. Alright, there's a problem with these two pads. Uh, 
That one's not picking up solder as well. Hmm. And we got a bridge over here, which we'll have to fix. This pad, hmm. now that I think about it, this pin right here, bottom row, leftmost, might be the one that's giving us trouble. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but uh, let's, uh, I mean, this shouldn't be too difficult. If it doesn't work, I'll just pull it off and see if I can scrape this down a little bit more. Or better yet, let me put it under the microscope and see what's going on. I'll be right back. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but these uh, the accelerometers are available on DigiKey now. You don't have to get them from InventSense or CDI Web or on the slow boat from China. They are they are a little more expensive. They're about ten bucks instead of um, you know six, but uh, still, when you need it and you only need one, it's a great place to get it. Okay, let's just find pin one. Okay, so that's all ready to go. Just give this a quick dab of flux. This pin one's in this bottom right hand corner. And let's just double check this. Yep. Now, when you place this chip, the, uh, the trick to doing this kind of blind is uh, it's okay to have it slightly askew. Um, let me see if I can get a toothpick here. The idea here is that uh, we're going to use the uh, we're going to use the properties of the solder and the flux to pull it into place. So even if it's not perfectly aligned, that's okay because once everything reflows, it should just snap right into place. So I'm going to give maybe this bottom right hand corner just a little bit of a tap so that it's off so that it's off center. And then when uh, when this heats up to reflow stage, it should just suck it right into place. At least that's what I think will happen, but we'll find out. All right, moment of truth here. Just waiting for the heat gun to come up to temp. That movement is just the uh, the flux bubbling. That's not it snapping into place. But as you can see, it's already starting to move. All right. Now I think I see some of the solder starting to reflow, and the components around the edges are definitely reflowing. So I'm gonna keep this on for just a few more seconds. Okay, we're good. And that should be okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's just give that a second to cool down. All right, just give me two seconds while I look at this under the microscope. As you can see there, it's kind of tough to, to make it out on camera, but um, these pads here, one, two, three, um, I don't know if they completely connected, so just to be sure, I'm gonna go in with the uh, the solder, the fine tip soldering iron and uh, just touch those up a little bit. Sorry for the mess here, hang on. A little bit of flux. This one is definitely giving us trouble. All 
Now on this side, uh, it's hard to see at this angle, but um, pins one and two are going to need to be redone. And then on this bottom panel, uh, the second pin from the left is going to need a little bit of love. So, glad you're going to get a chance to see this because I actually did this earlier and it was pretty interesting. Um, what I did was grab the blob of solder on this really fine tipped pen and uh, was able to dab it on those pads but just the right amount. See that? All that all it takes is a little touch. Be right back. Well, some good news. Looks like it was a success. I just plugged it in and um, the stabilization uh, box is now green instead of yellow and everything is um, reporting as, uh, as working in the um, ground control station. So I'd say, I'd say this was a success. Uh, so just to review really quickly, um, it was a uh, Oh, I'm sorry, you know, I forgot to mention some of the models of uh, what I'm using. I have a, a 3-in-1 hot air workstation. Uh, it's the X-Power 853D, but it's rebranded under like 10 different models. You can find them on Amazon for about 118 bucks, 119 bucks. And um, they call it a 3-in-1, but it's actually, uh, it's hot air, a soldering station, a voltage, uh, a, an adjustable power supply, as well as um, a, a voltage multimeter, an RF power meter, which I still haven't quite figured out how to use. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, you, you get all of that for 119 bucks, and when you consider that a Weller Wes 51 is like uh, 95 bucks just for the uh, soldering iron alone, it's pretty good value. Um, but, yeah, I used the, uh, the hot air tip that was at about, I don't know, I'd say uh, 650, uh, 700 degrees. Uh, applied that heat for about um, 25, 30 seconds. It's a little fast. Uh, you know, these chips like about a two-minute reflow. Uh, you know, gently ramp them up and then gently ramp them down, but uh, I wanted to get this off and on, on really quickly. Um, and once it was off, go ahead and retin the pads, clean everything up uh, with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, reflow the new component back on, and then go in with a fine pitch uh, soldering tip and, and start touching up the pins. Now to do this, uh, I was doing this on an HD camcorder and looking at a, an off-screen um, high definition shot of this so it was a little tricky to, to do that so um but yeah looks like we're we're in good shape this is ready to pop into um another rig oh and actually let me show you got a fun little thing here you guys get to you guys get a nice preview of this this will eventually be going in uh, 3D printed micro FPV quadcopter. <laughs> this is something that I printed on my um, PrinterBot Junior. As you know, it, which only has about a 4x5 four, four platform, but I was able to hack it to get a 10x10. 10 10. And uh, this is a 250 millimeter motor to motor, uh, basically shrunk down version of a QAV400. Um, it's got the uh, rubber dampers on the edge. And uh, this is all made out of PLA. The all up weight's about 410 grams. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the ZMR1804 motors with 5.3 props, the Gemfan um, 5.3 props. I do have the carbon fibers, but uh, yeah, I mean, this thing flies. You can see that in the channel. And um, the CC3D will probably end up going in, in back in here. Um, yeah, so great. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you found that useful, just... Um... So yeah, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments or anything else you want to see, at least on the repair side for a CC3D, uh, just let me know, and uh, you know I'll, I'll put a recording together for you. I get a lot of these in from uh, from our flyers and crash a lot, so uh, I've turned into something of the mechanic for the group. So I'm trying to keep everybody up in the air, and that includes myself. Thanks for watching. Take care.